Good morning everyone. I am so sorry that we are so late, but if we had been filming in the last 45 minutes, it would be more of a comedy film because if every disaster could go wrong this morning, every disaster can go wrong. So welcome to Carol, John, Maria and Laura in the Sugar and Crumbs uh, team today. Okay, we're all here live and today we're making marshmallows. Now, I've never made marshmallows myself, but Laura makes them on a regular basis, but not since I've been on a diet, and they are absolutely amazing. And we make them with the flavored icing sugars, okay? So Laura's already made a batch because they take about 45 minutes to set. So she's already made a batch today of raspberry ripple flavor. We are going to make the chocolate mint flavor, and of course, marshmallows, they're amazing in the Turkish delight flavour. Now, if you can hear that little screaming in the background, it's not that we've got that we've been gagging John or anything. It's baby Harrison. So Laura, do you want to come forward? So <laughs> I am going to look after baby Harrison today, and Laura is actually going to chat to him. He's absolutely exhausted. He needs to go to sleep. But you know how they are, they're cranky at this time. So Laura's going to take over the demo. And I'm just wondering where my John's gone so we can shout out some hellos. So I'm sure he'll be back any second. So just to remind you, Maria, can you go and find John for me, please? Because we need to shout out some hellos, please. So just to remind you that the sale is still on. The icing sugars are doing really, really very, very well. They're two pound a bag. Make sure that you grab those bags now. It finishes on Sunday at midnight. So Lord, do you wanna just go and see if you can calm him down a moment? Finishes at Sunday on uh, Sunday night at midnight. Um, so John's back with us. <laughs> so finishes Sunday at midnight and I've actually lost where I am now. So John, I've lost exactly where I am because I've got myself disorientated. This is what happens. We have lots of viewers. <laughs> Pardon? We have lots of viewers. We've got 62 viewers. So lots of uh, regulars at, uh, we've got Lindsay, Lynn, Lindsay and Maria. Lindsay who, John? Lindsay McIver, Lynn Spruels, Joe Fitchett, Jenny Scholes, Louisa Johnson, who I think you can see again. Louise is all the way from Australia. We've got Lynn Hill. We've got Rachel. So lots of regulars and also quite a few people that I don't recognise. Right, so you know what? I'm really glad there's lots of regulars because the regulars can vouch that we are normally a little bit more organised than we've been this morning, okay? I'm always on fire, as you know. And uh, John's disappeared yet again now, so I still don't know who we're talking to. But basically, let's go over it again. We're making marshmallows today. We're making three types. Laura's already made one. What flavour did you make, Laura? Oh, she's already made Turkish delight, sorry. She's going to make chocolate mint and she's gonna make raspberry ripple, okay? What I'm actually going to do is now, I'm gonna get let Laura take over. All the links are on the tab, okay? And anybody who hasn't going to watch all of it or they want to do replay, it will be pinned to the top of our page after the session and this afternoon it will actually go onto YouTube, but it won't go on this afternoon onto YouTube until about two, half past two, because we want to make sure all the other marshmallow is nice and set and uh, we can take some pictures on it to add on to the end of the session. So um, let me just welcome the, uh, the team to you. So I've got two Laura's, so it's always confusing. Don't close that door, it's too hot. Okay, so, so in our madness, come on round, Laura. So we've got two Laura's on the session today. Okay, we've got Laura Daughter. Laura, come on in, both of you. Just so you know who they are, we've got Laura Daughter, okay, with Baby Harrison. And we've got Office Laura. And we've sent Laura because, basically, with our cock up with the uh, marshmallows earlier. What did we do with Laura? What did you well, do? Well, what I did was when I was mounting the gelatine, I, you have to have it with some. <laughs> you have to use warm water, and I let it cool down too much, so my gelatine had got too thick. So when I put it into the marshmallow mixture, it just went rock hard. So at least I can tell you about it, and if that happens, you just need to know we that you need to start it. again. So Laura, I'm talking through that. I'm going to take the baby. And the reason this Laura's late is because she's been running around the shops getting some more shopping. So I am going to leave John. I'm going to leave John to look after you. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for him to go out of the room. So sorry about that. Um, he's four and a half months old now, and um, it's obviously a bit more difficult when you're trying to bake. 
but at least that it's just you know normal like most people's houses that sometimes you just have these little disasters but you can carry on so anyway we're going to make the two different types of marshmallows today which my mum's already talked about so i'm going to start by making the raspberry ripple one so i'm just going to quickly run through the ingredients that we've used well that we're going to use today so i've already weighed out here 200 grams of granulated sugar and it is important to use this and not caster sugar because caster sugar is too fine you do need that heaviness from this one um, I've got some water which we're going to use into the sugar mixture and um, we're going to use 200 grams of the raspberry ripple icing sugar and we're going to use 50 grams as you'll see on the recipe it says 250 it's because 50 grams we're going to use later when we chop them up so um, I'll just pop that there in a moment so I've got gelatine sachets which um, are here they come in a pack of three and that's what we, we need we need the whole three so I'll just pop them there the liquid glucose I find that the Dr Ocker one is available in most of the supermarkets that you normally shop in so it's quite easy to find and um, they don't do it in the smaller ones you do have to go to a big supermarket um, but you need 200 grams of this so as this is 140 grams you're going to need 140 from one and then take 60 from another so the last thing you need is 180 mils of hottish water but just from the tap not boiling so I'm going to get that now So that's what I did wrong before because I got the hot water before I started and I wasn't ready to start using it. That's why my gelatine had set because I'd then left it and it had gone cold. So we're just going to start by taking the gelatine sachets. Now people do always ask me about a vegetarian ver um, version of this. So you can buy the Dr. Opka gelatine in the vegan gel. Now that one I have used before and it is the only one that I have managed to get to use in the marshmallows. Um, I do know other people have tried the supermarket's own brand. But they just, for some reason they, they haven't been working very well for people. So I would use the Dr. Opka one. So once we've got all these gelatine sachets in here. I'm just going to use this little whisk, which is quite a handy one, and I'm just going to give that a good whisk. You need to make sure that all this gelatine is dissolved well into that water. And while we're getting everything else ready, you do need to keep coming back to this and making sure that you're whisking it so that it doesn't go hard like I did before. Okay, so... I've got a heavy base pan here. Heavy base just means that it's got this um, larger bottom on it. That stops your sugar from burning. If you use a normal pan, then the sugar can burn easier. This just gives it a better distribution of heat. So I'm just going to set that on there. And I'm going to add in the 200 grams of granulated sugar. And then I'm just going to measure out 200 grams of the raspberry ripple icing sugar. tablespoons of water this is just cold water out of the tap one two three and then the last thing that we need in here is our liquid glucose now as I said before we're going to use um, 200 grams so there's 140 in here and I've already um, pre-emptied some out of here so I've got 60 in there so I'm going to be using both now the easiest way and quickest way that I find to get this out is just to snip off the bottom because it is super sticky. Lift up the lid just so you can get a bit more release. Otherwise, it does take quite a lot of time to get out of the tube. And you are going to get it on your fingers, but 
wouldn't be baking without a little bit of mess. Okay, so we'll just get rid of that. And then here's the other one that I've already used. We'll just get the rest of that out. Okay, so just to come back to the gelatine again quickly, just give that another whisk just to make sure that it's not setting while we're um, getting the sugar ready. So I'm going to turn this on to medium heat and I'm just going to use a silicone spatula. And we're just going to start stirring it. Now it does look quite dry at the beginning, but as the sugar melts, it turns into a liquid. So we'll just keep stirring it until it's all melted in. So what we're looking for with this um, is to melt it all down. And then when it starts to turn into a liquid form and it starts to bubble, that's when we are going to um, let it bubble for five minutes more and then we're going to take it out. If you do go over, then your sugar is just going to turn back to a solid um, form again if we heat it for too much and then try and use it. So I don't use a sugar thermometer for everything because normally I can't find it and um, it just seems to be the case in every baking that I do. If there's something that I want to use, I can never find where it is. So I'm going to show you how to do it without the thermometer. But on the recipe, if you wanted to use your thermometer, then go ahead, it's no problem. Um, you're looking to get to 112 degrees on your, on your thermometer. Okay, so we're starting to get this melted sugar now. So just let that melt a little bit. Again, back to the gel team. Just making sure that no lumps are forming in there. Keep coming back to your sugar. If you leave it, then it is going to start to burn on the bottom. So that's why it's important that you are stirring all the time. So with the one that I've already pre-made, which is here, it's just set in. I'll just show you the camera. We're looking down on it or sideways. Which way, John? <laughs> it's, just, it's just set in at the moment. So this is the Turkish Delight one. Um, so it's just show you that I have coloured it slightly um, in a light pink. So I'm going to show you at what point is best to do that. And then later, that's going to be the one that I'm going to chop up and show you um, what you do once you've sliced it, give you some little tips on how best to slice it because as um, marshmallow is really sticky, it just gets everywhere. Okay, so that should start to bubble now. If I just let it go still, then I can see if any bubbles form in. I'm just going to give the gelatine another quick whisk. Has anybody got any questions? If they cut the rest of glucose, can yes. they store it or does it have to be used immediately? No, yeah, they can, they can, they can store it. Um, I've um, made marshmallows and then left it six weeks and used it again and it's been absolutely fine. So yeah, don't waste anything if you don't need to. I just normally um, try and fold it back over, put a bit of sellotape around the top of it. Um, just to stop it from leaking, and then I just um, keep it in the in the cupboard. Everyone's saying you're looking good, and it's nice to have you back. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's been a while. I was a bit nervous this morning coming in because um, obviously it's been a long time since I did my last Facebook Live, and you just get all those first time nerves again. And then, even though I've done quite a few videos with Maria. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's something about talking to people that you can't see that just, just makes you nervous. 
But I'm all right. I'm all right once I start going. Just need to get going and then I'm fine. Okay, so we're starting to get a few little bubbles um, in here now. So once it starts bubbling, it's, fa it's five minutes from then that we're going to start to take it out. So I don't know whether you can see that the bubbles forming. Can you see them? I need to move that, yeah? So we're just going to give it a couple of minutes. Because you know, you know that it's close then. Um, when it's bubbling, it's normally about 100 degrees. Um, so five minutes is just giving it that extra time to reach the 112 mark. Um, now, depending on the heat that you've got on, and all different, you know, people's hobs are different um, every, everywhere, you just want to keep an eye on it. And as you're stirring, once it starts to move away from the pan, so if you can see when I'm stirring, I can see the bottom of my pan. That's my... Um, sign that it's that it's it's very close so what else you need and what we're going to be using next is the mixer which i've got set up just over there just give this another quick stir okay so this is really bubbling away now so this is this is what we wanted um, from that so i'm just going to turn that off got there quite quickly. Pan's a lot bigger than what I normally use so obviously the surface can heat up a lot faster. So like I say it's not always five minutes it just it just depends on your pan and your hob um, but that's what you're looking for that nice bubbly mixture. So we're just going to move over to the mixer so I'm just going to go over here and bring in my gelatine with me. Okay so I'm just going to see if you can do it this way because the camera's that way. Sorry Maria. <laughs> So we're just going to pour in the sugar mixture in here. Like so. And then get that under a hot tap just so it doesn't set. That's going to be hard to get out later. And then straight away get your mixer on. So you just want it on um, a lowish setting, pour on a kitchen aid. So for a couple of minutes, we're going to let that um, mix away. So it's cooling it down at the same time. And then we're going to get ready to pour our gelatine in. So I'll just give it about two minutes just to whisk on its own first. And just keep giving your gelatine a whisk while you're waiting, so you can see that. New camera system since I was last year, so all new. Okay, so you can see that the mixture is slightly sticking in and it's um, quite light. That's what we're, we're, looking, for, we're looking for. Sorry. I'm just going to take my whisk out of there. And then while the um, mix is on, we're just going to start pouring in the gel team quite slowly. Just because I want to make sure that it's evenly distributed through that sugar mixture. So with the veggie gel, it just you do exactly the same thing. You just use the veggie gel instead of that one. Okay, so now that that's all in, I'm just going to turn it up. And then we're going to leave that for 10 minutes, roughly. So, as I said before, I've coloured the other one and I'm going to tell you at which point you would need to colour it. You don't want to start colouring it until it's cooled down quite a lot. So, we're going to pop that over to this side. And we're going to prepare the tin. So, I've just got a brownie tin here. And I've got some vegetable oil with this tiny little brush. Now I always use a silicone brush and the reason being is none of the little uh, brush hairs come out and you don't want them to put your mouth because you're never going to get them out. So got a little bit of ice and sugar in it, that's fine. And we're just going to get something filled. And you're just going to lay 
a little bit thin, pushing it in as best as you can. Now the question, don't you use quick egg whites? No. There is, there is marshmallow recipes that you can use that use egg whites. With this one, we don't use any egg whites. There's different variations. I just find that this recipe works really well. It's quite easy. Um, and it works. We don't need to change it. So, just on with this one. So I'm just going to dip my brush into the oil and I'm just going to use this little brush to put a little layer of grease across my cling film. And the reason why I'm doing this is because marshmallow is super sticky, um, it does stick to absolutely everything. So this is just going to stop that from happening. So you just need to brush it as best as you can all on the inside. And that's going to help you later on when you want to take it out. And then this little extra bit that I've laid over here is going to be the top of the um, marshmallow. So again, I'm going to put it over the top of the marshmallow so I don't want that to stick either. So we're just going to get that side ready. Raspberry Ripple, I'm going to be using some jam to stir through the marshmallow um, when I put it into the tray. And the best way is to get your raspberry jam. You can heat it up um, if you wish just to get it um, really smooth. As this one's quite a smooth one, it hasn't really got any lumps in. I'm not going to. So I'll just give it a really good stir, getting that ready for the marshmallow. You just want to make sure that there's no lump in it. I'm going to put that aside. So as we are waiting 10 minutes for this marshmallow, I'm just going to get started again and repeat everything that we've already done with the chocolate mint so that while we're waiting for this one to do, um, you can see what I've already done and if you've missed anything, you can watch it again. So I'm just going to pop this out of the way. So with the chocolate, uh, one we're using the mint chocolate. So again, I've got my 200 grams of granulated sugar and I've got my mint chocolate icing sugar, which I'm just gonna weigh out. There's no need to sieve the icing sugar. Um, people do ask that a lot, but um, the icing sugar is quite um, fine. It's only if you've already had your icing sugar open and it does look really lumpy that you that you sip it, but otherwise you don't need to. So the question would it be easier just to use an oil spray or even cake release rather than well, brushing on the because you with, with cake release when you cook you cook in your cake, that cake release kind of um, disappears when you when you're cooking it with this you put in that marshmallow onto the oil and it doesn't disappear so the only thing with the cake release face it, it might taste a bit different whereas the, the vegetable oil one time soaked it in the um corn flour and ice and sugar mixture when i put it up you can't taste anything so give it a go by all means but if you've got vegetable oil then you can use that So we've got another pan here, so we've got our 200 grams of granulated sugar, our 200 grams of chocolate mint icing sugar, three tablespoons of water, Thank you. 
there's been chaos this morning. People are going to get child minded because Alyssa's is in Paris and he's definitely not a happy baby today. He was all bright smiles and everything until five minutes before we went live and then he went completely bonkers. I don't know whether he felt the panic in here when Laura had, um, I'm sure she's explained to you what went wrong with the um, marshmallow. And then Office Laura has been on, been to three shops to try and get more gelatine and glucose. And then I found some in the other kitchen. So <laughs> we had to get her back. <laughs> and then of course John disappeared. And then we went live actually on my personal page. So when we went live the first time, we actually went live on our personal page and we wondered where you all were. So I've done about five minutes of the session and um, we were on the wrong page. So we had to go in there, delete that very quickly. <laughs> delete that very quickly. So, uh, so now I've got my eldest son, who's just had two babies, minding Harrison. So don't worry, he's not alone. He's screaming his head off with Wesley. So uh, Wesley's got good practice, because as you know, he's got a, is he four, she four weeks old now, Ruby? Yeah. So Ruby's four weeks old, doing exactly the same thing, but I'm sure that he came here today for a bit of peace and quiet. And <laughs> got Harrison dumped on it. <laughs> right, Laura, how's this going? So I'm just going to come back to the marshmallow in the mixer. I'm trying to speak as loud as I can so that you can hear me. So this is the point that you want to add any colour in. So we've got a couple of minutes left on this marshmallow and as you can see it's fluffed up really nice, it's increased in size um, and so if you want to colour it, add in your colouring now so it's just got that little bit of time to um, mix in before it's coming out. So I'm just going to cover that up just so it's not as noisy. I'm going to come back over to here. So as you can see, the um, sugar mixture is uh, has melted down nicely. So I'm going to get the gelatine ready. So again, I've got 180 ml of um, hot water from the tap, not boiling, and I'm just going to add it in. As I add it in, I'm just going to give it a whisk. And it's really important that you do keep whisking all of the time with the gelatine because it does start to set pretty much. Um, quite quickly, get all that in there, get rid of the luggage, and just mix all that in, and then coming back to our chocolate mixture, we're getting some nice bubbles here, so it, is, it does take a bit of time, but once you do know how to make the marshmallows, it is very easy, and before today I've never had any problems. But I think the distraction of the baby and I don't know. I'm just loving, I don't know. Let's just say it's been a fun experience. <laughs> it's, um, things, things, the good thing is, is that things do go wrong, and um, if you know where you're going wrong, that's half the battle. So we're getting some nice bubbles. Don't here. worry. We've left all those problems with your big brother now. <laughs> just remember, he never had to do anything for years. No, and I am on number three, so it's about time that he did help. So that's getting exactly where I want it to be. My gelatine is melting in nicely, so I'm just going to turn this off the heat. Just pop it aside a moment, because I think our marshmallow will be ready for the come out. So let's move that aside. Do you want me to stir it then so it doesn't go home again? That's too cool last time, doesn't it? Stop that there. So this is what you're looking for. Nice, fluffy, um, texture, feet inside, white. It's um, all just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to get my tray back over into position here. And I'm going to... Where's my spatula? Get the spatula guide. Just to know that this still isn't on the heat, this is just yes, off, just off the heat now. So and what, what you're gonna do with do, this? Just keep whisking it so it doesn't set. Right, so you, you just need up. to scrape down. Obviously, don't ever try and make two at the same time. I'm no. just doing this because we had such a um, big weight in between. <laughs> and a screaming baby. <laughs> being done. It just made sense to start the other one and run through everything again. So I'm gonna bring this over here. 
And if you can get that attachment off and get the next one on just behind you, we can get the chocolate one in. So we've got our pre-greased tray here. And we're just going to, can you see this, John? Mm -hmm. We're just going to get out the marshmallow. Well, as you can see, lovely texture. It's silky, fluffy, everything that you want from a marshmallow. On the top, and it smells delicious. Okay, so get it all in. Then you're going to get a nice big chunky marshmallow at the end when we slice it up. So as you can see, it's super sticky. Okay, so we're just going to try our best to spread that into the corners, like so. And as this is raspberry ripple, we're going to be adding in the jam. Yeah. So now, at this stage, you will want to lick the bowl and the spatula. But you'll notice that I put it straight in the sink straight away with water on before I stick my fingers in there because <laughs> it's just so good. Okay, so <laughs> what we're going to do is you're just going to dab a few blobs. Do you want to pour that into the... Pour this in? Into there, yeah. yeah. I wanted to be here today to watch this so I know how to make <laughs> myself. So I'm just pouring this straight in here. So, right? yeah. So right. Pour it straight into the... It's all in. Just need to turn it onto a, a low setting. Okay. You back over yeah. this way, right? So now we've got our jam. Um, jam. Yeah. Even know what I'm saying. <laughs> now we've got our jam in the marshmallow. I've just put the blobs in. I'm just taking a cocktail stick, and I'm just going to swirl through the jam. Do anything that you want and swirl it. You can do lines, whatever you fancy. It just gives that nice bit. And what happens is the jam sinks down a little bit into the marshmallow so that when you chop it up, um, you can see the jam in the middle. So, John, is there any questions then? Oh, this is that then. Does anybody want to ask anything? What's the shelf like of marshmallows once you've made them? So well, once you've made them, they're normally best eaten in the first five days, up to a week, I would say, just because after then it just starts to get a bit sticky. I normally keep it in um, a mason jar or um, into um, a plastic container. And, but to be honest, it's not very often that they last longer than five days. They're very often, aren't they? Like these <laughs> They won't last any longer than when they're ready. No. So uh, the green side of the cling film is going to go over the top of there and we're just going to tuck it in. And then this side that is dry is going to go over again. And more questions like that. And then we're just going to leave that to set. So just to quickly go back over to this one. On the other camera. Thank you. On the other camera. So this is about a couple of minutes to. Um, mix in the mixer and again I've got my gelatine here. These whisks are really handy little whisks as you can see. Can you see that John? Uh, which is really handy for, for this kind of thing because it is getting right to the gelatine it's not it's not missing anything. And what we're gonna do is just pour it under that camera there. See that camera, just show it under that camera that you need it to. You don't see it. Go back a bit. Yeah, well, just to the mixer. Yeah, that's it. Put it on there. Sure. So, this is, so just making sure that the, the gelatine is uh, all mixed in. And it's, uh, it's, when it's all mixed in, it gets like this little froth on the top. And that's what you want. If you haven't got any froth, then it's because it's not being really mixed very well. And if it's not mixed very well, it sticks to everything. So I'm going to start to pour this in again. You see? Again, we're just going to do that slowly, pouring it in, just so it gets distributed evenly. You'll see that it is mixing in really well into the chocolate mix. So you can use any of our ice and sugar flavours, so you can 
to any type that you want, depending on the season. Or um, I'll say raspberry ripple, what one's nice for a Valentine's Day gift. Um, you the um, gingerbread flavour, vanilla flavour at Christmas, and then any other kind of just whatever I fancy that week. Laura, we have the question, do you put them in the fridge to set them? Um, I don't put them in the fridge, but every time that I have made it here, I leave it out and mum puts it in the fridge. Because she likes putting things in the fridge. I thought they have to go in the fridge. But, yeah, that's what Joy said to me. I thought that's what I was meant to be doing, but you don't have to put it in the fridge. It sets just as fine at room temperature. Um, if it was a very, very extreme hot day, very rare in England, so if you're in another nice country that does get good weather, you might want to put it in the fridge just to help it to set quicker. But if you're not in a rush, you can leave it out on the side with no problem. How do you freeze the marshmallows? I've never frozen the marshmallow, um, but we can freeze some of the one that we've made today and we can let you know. And if we were going to freeze the ones we made today, would we, several, would we wrap the tin in cling film several times to well, protect it from water or anything like that? I would, yeah, but it's definitely. Yeah, it yeah, it's, yeah. While somebody's asked, we might as well, and then we can answer it mm -hmm. in the future because some questions that we, that we get, we don't always know the answer, but we do try our best to find out for you. So I will chop off a little bit, wrap it up in some cling film, and then in a couple of days we'll take it out and come back to it. Maybe we can show them on Monday night, or I don't know, let them know. And what people need to realise what they're making here, they're making fresh marshmallows. Yes. They're not making the marshmallows like you get in shops that have got preservatives. To yes. Keep for yeah. months on end. Yeah. These Any are fresh marshmallows. Yeah. yeah. This is homemade marshmallows. So yeah. this is, if you want to give it a go, you want to make a special gift to somebody, or you just love marshmallows and can't buy enough, then this is a, an alternative for you to make it yourself. It, it is quite fun. The kids love making marshmallows with me. One, because it's really messy, and two, because they're obsessed with marshmallows and they love um, chopping a bit off and washing it between two biscuits. Not only that, but the flavoured icing sugar, yeah, they the, taste yeah. amazing. The, and anything I make at home with the icing sugar, the kids absolutely love, but marshmallows and fudge are their top two things. Um, well, what I can tell you is, we have Lindsay McIver, I think she's watching Lindsay. Yeah. Now, Lindsay McIver, since you did your first demo last year on the marshmallows, I call her the marshmallow queen, and she is watching, and she's... She is a Facebook follower from us who we've got to know very well and she does follow a lot of our recipes and Lindsay will be able to vouch and probably post some pictures after of how many she's made and yeah, how yeah, easy they made. And I call her the marshmallow people. queen. Yeah. I think that's what she should change her name to. Hey yeah. Lindsay? Hi Lindsay. <laughs> so we keep them at room temperature to set. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is the one. Can we move over? on the camera and you might be able to hear me, but can you hear me all right here? So, Geraldine Tiffy's how long do they need to set? Um, I normally give them at least 45 minutes, so these ones um, I made this morning, uh, well, after my disaster, they, these ones were made at uh, half past 10, so, yeah. so, they were, so I would have finished making it at about 10 to 11 when I finished know the, the whole sequence of making it and um, so it was just it was very close to not being made at all but I really wanted to show you what it looks like when it's set and give you some tips on how to chop it all because of how sticky it is. Well, so I am going to show you how to chop this one off. Yeah. So I'm just going to say thanks to everybody who's watching because a lot of you are answering the questions for us and that's what I really like when you're a community you know, we're all here live as a community. Everyone's helping out and yeah. answering the questions, Laura. Because yeah. I know I'm getting you to repeat a lot of them. So, Rhea has said, I've never made marshmallows. You guys make it sound simple. It, uh, everything is simple once you know how. And that's why we're doing these videos for you. We want you to be able to take our recipes and do them yourself. But I'm not any sort of marshmallow professional or professional in anything else. I just really enjoy baking at home. Um, I did start with cakes and I've branched out doing these other things and the more that I make, the happy it makes me feel because I just love turning up at different places and saying this is what I've made and, and for me that gives me a 
sense of achievement. So that's what we want for you. We want you to be able to feel like you've achieved something and you've done something on your own that other people are going to be really impressed with as well. Then the next thing is, can the chocolate marshmallow be able to be put on top of hot chocolate? I don't see a reason why not. Once it's set, if you put it into um, a hot chocolate, then it'll melt the same as any Just other. Just put it smaller, like yeah. would. And no. then the other question is, somebody asked, could you toast them like toasted marshmallows? Yes, you can. We, what we do with the marshmallows is we get two chocolate digestive biscuits. Really not good if you're doing your January diet like myself. You get two chocolate digestive biscuits, put your um, marshmallow, um, over on a stick, over your hob, just so it melts a little bit, and then we put it in between two biscuits, and it's like um, small, and they're absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, they are. But I just need to go back to get my tray ready because this is nearly done now. So as you can see, it's um, lightened up, which is what happens with the chocolate um, marshmallow. So I'm just going to put that on really low because it is ready, but my tray's not ready. So I'm just going to nip back over here and quickly show you what we did with the tray again. So you have to excuse the mess that I've made, I uh, haven't had time to wipe it up. But I've just got here a brown tin which works out best for this recipe and it does fill it all nicely. So we're just going to go past the tin so we've got enough to go over. So I'm just, go I'm just going to brush with the oil. So we need to push it down while we're brushing. So again, I'm using this little silicone brush just because it won't let any little hairs on, on my normal pastry brush. All the little mm. hairs come out of it and it drives me mad because I'm trying to get them out. But with marshmallows, you're just not getting it out. So if you can get one of these little silicone brushes, I actually picked this up in the supermarket, um, one, of the, one of the bigger ones, and it is being um, amazing. Right, let me just ask a couple of questions, Laura. Somebody said, can you make a sugar-free method? I wouldn't have thought so, would you? It's marshmallows is sugar, isn't it? Sugar-free. I've, I've never done it, so I've, <laughs> I, again, I can't, I can't say. Um, I, don't, I don't know, to be honest. I wouldn't know. We'll have to the have thing is, with, with, with this recipe, maybe with the egg white recipe, I've never done egg white um, marshmallows, but... With the uh, with with this one, it's obviously the liquid glucose is sugary, the um, icing sugar, the granulated sugar. It is sugar, so um, I'd have to have a look into that because so I'm, I'm not too sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just ask some more questions while we're here busy. Uh, Annetta, the recipe of is on the top of our page. So when this live's finished, it's actually on the top of our page. Plus, we'll tell you afterwards when the mix is finished. We'll go over some of these questions again. Um, let me look. Um, oh, well done, Laura. Office Laura's answered the question. <laughs> Helen Mills can't see all the comments. I'm not quite sure why you can't see them, Helen. But you will be able to read all the comments after without having to watch the live again. Iris is definitely going to have a good at, go at the marshmallows. Iris. Yep. Iris, I tell you, Iris, you will love these. Yeah, and let us know how you get on with these recipes. Yeah. We want to see how you've got on with them as well. So um, we're, we're here to show you how, how to do it and help you. And, you know, hopefully you'll get... What share we, them with us. Yes, you can share <laughs> your kitchen. We would love to see, I would love to see that I have actually helped somebody um, learn how to do something. So, um, yeah, please let us know, send us a picture. So, I'm just going to go back to this marshmallow. Sorry to keep changing, <laughs> don't know where to be. Obviously, the You're slowest on camera, now. camera will do. Um, but I'm just going to go back over to my marshmallow because I don't want to over whisk it. Because if you over whisk it, that is when you're going to get it all um, too sticky and you're not going to be able to move. So, what I didn't do before, and I'm going to show you now, just to give you another little tip, is that any of the things that you use in any of your utensils that you're going to use, if you brush a little bit of oil, just over here, onto your um, spatula, just like that, it's just going to help that little bit more if you're struggling to get it off, and sometimes it is really hard to get it all out. So, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on there just to help loosen it up off the side of my mixer. So John, I'm going to walk over this way. 
Are you coming with me? I'm going back <laughs> over to our tray. I'm Are you ready? Are you going to ask questions, Charlotte? So we're back over here. So sorry to be so to in throwing, but it's just the way it is. If it was in my kitchen, I'd have my back to you the whole time because my uh, my hob is not facing it's not on anybody my else. So I'm just going to get that mixture into there. Lindsay said she's back off to the shops again, back onto marshmallows. Yeah, she's not? just ordered chocolate mint, actually. And this smells absolutely lovely. And um, if you are going to lick any of the marshmallow out of the bowl, which I'm guilty of, make sure it's cool. Yeah. Well, what I did with the other one, I put water in it straight away, but I think I'm going to have to just taste this one. So I'm just going to. <laughs> Ooh, look at this, Maria. So I'm just going to wrap up this chocolate <laughs> one. So again, we're just using the side of the cling film that we've oiled it's already so to go over the top there like that. That's nice, isn't it? And then again, I just fold that one extra layer. <laughs> Over and snap it off. Okay, so right. that is gorgeous. I think it has to be chocolate mint marshmallows all the way now. That's absolutely gorgeous. So I don't know whether you can see here. We've got our three different types of marshmallow. We've got our Turkish delight, which I coloured pink. Turkish delight. We've got the raspberry ripple that we added in the jam too, and then we've got our chocolate variation. So just just to show you that you can use any of the ice and sugar flavors. You don't have to use a particular one. They all work just as well. So next, I'm going to chop up the ones that we made earlier, and I'm going to show you what you need to do. And I have to tell you, oh my God, this tastes good. Yeah. So I'm just going <laughs> to. This is so space. bad. <laughs> so, um, taste a bit, John. <laughs> no, you've not got time. You sure you don't want this bowl, Laura? No, I'm not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I started my January diet, which was not a good time to start, but I started it last week and I'm doing really well at the moment, so I don't want to uh, lick in the bowl, I'll just have a bit of my shell lately, because technically they are fat free. But, I'm just going to see how you love this cook with baby Harrison. Um, I forgot about him. Do you want a knife? Just into my baking. Yes, I need a sharp knife and I need um, a board to chop up with. So I'll just grab them if we can. So I've just got a large bowl here and then I've got my marshmallow that we prepared earlier. So I'm just going to unwrap that. So as you can see, the cling film has come off really well because of the oil. I'll just put that there. So I've got some corn flour here. Here you go. Now you need to have 35 grams of corn flour. Thank you. You're going to need a chopping board to chop it up on and you're going to need the other 50 grams of your icing sugar. So this one is the Turkish Delight. So again, we'll just grab this here to get this mixture ready. Now, what we're doing here is just stopping the marshmallow from being sticky, giving it a, a dry coating, but we're adding a little bit more flavour because why not? Um, because a lot of marshmallow recipes, you just add corn flour, but as we're using Turkish Delight, we might as well add a little bit more. So I'm just going to pop in 50 grams into my bowl. You'd be pleased to know our baby's very happy. I'm just baking. saying I forgot about him, got into me baking and just like, it's not very often that I'm by myself anymore. <laughs> so, you're like a on your proud. little treat. Okay, so I've got my, I've actually gone a little bit over but that's fine. So we're just going to pop that in there and then we're just going to get 35 grams of the corn flour. Oh, somebody saying she makes sugar-free marshmallows with like the xylitol. Xylitol. 
I've, I've never heard of that, but if you want to share your recipe, I'm sure we can change it so that yeah, you can well, use, we can it, go, use our icing sugar in it. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can give it a go. Yeah, I've got silent all here. Do you want to do another batch? Have you? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> so I'm just going to add my corn powder to my icing sugar. Can you see that? All right. Oh, I'll put it over here. Can you see that? Yep, with a right, camera up. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to mix that in together. Somebody said the only problem with sugar free is the icing sugar is not sugar free and there's no alternatives but yeah that makes sense. Yeah there, is, yeah. there has got to be some sugar in there somewhere yeah. but um, obviously if you want to reduce it down because you want to make a slightly um, healthier version it, or, yeah. then, then, then yeah you can give it a go. So I've just got all that mixed in ready, like that. And is that set in time? So this is had. So to see if it's set, we should be able to lift it away. Oh, look at that. So Ooh, it's, it's, it's exciting. So <laughs> Turkish delight flavour. <laughs> it is still going to be messy, but I'm just trying to do a few things just to try and yeah. help a little bit to try and make it a bit easier. Yeah, we're speeding yeah. the process. <laughs> not really much that I do that isn't messy to be honest. So I'm just going to peel away the cling film. So as you can see that oil has stopped it from sticking but if you don't, didn't use the oil, I'm just going to put that down, I don't know why I'm holding it. If you didn't use the oil it sticks to the side there, can you see that? Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, just turn it round again that way. It's stuck a little bit there. If you didn't use any oil it would just all stick, stick. and you'd never get it out yeah, of your tray. Yeah. So that's so, quite important that so they yeah, do that's that, isn't it? Important. So I have got um, my oil here again, so I'm just going to put a little layer on my brush just to hopefully make it a little bit easier to cut. Now you can cut this however you want and you can also use your cookie, your cookie um, cutters to cut but again if you just put a little bit of oil on your cookie cutter if you wanted to do heart shapes or star shapes then you could do. Um, we have done that before for Valentine's Day um, but I'm just going to um, chop this into some nice big chunks because then if you have one and it's massive you still only add one. Yeah but they're the best ones. So <laughs> that's what we're going to go with. Right we're so, just, I've put the camera down there now right. to look at you there. Okay so we're just going to chop through. Let me see if there's any more questions. Which way does the questions go John? Separate, so I'm just going to put you that over there. Um, Debbie Stevenson says, any oil or a particular oil, it's vegetable oil. I always oil. use vegetable oil yeah. just because it doesn't have um, that really yeah. strong taste. So and I've just, can and we, can I've just seen Laura here is doing her job and she's answered it already. Well done, oh, Laura. Thanks. <laughs> so I'm just chopping it into nice big chunks, but again, go as big or as little as you want. Um, Helen Mills, the chocolate mint icing sugar is icing sugar not cocoa yes, powder it's very important that you're using icing sugar. sugar if you use cocoa powder it's not going going to go very well no. that is going to be a disaster it's very important that it's icing sugar and um, our chocolate icing sugar is obviously chocolate a little bit of cocoa powder in with the icing sugar so if you wanted to um make it it does need to be a chocolate icing sugar yeah uh, Emily Richards says she doesn't like marshmallows. <gasps> <laughs> she doesn't like marshmallows, but she's definitely going to try these. I'm telling you now, Emily, when she this does these. Change your mind. The thing is, most people have only ever tried a shop marshmallow, and these are different. Yeah. They are not full of all the normal preservatives that they put in to um, the shop bought ones. So. Do give them a go, and if <clears throat> if you don't like them, which you can't see, being honest, then definitely everyone else that you do make them for will. Well, them. So I've just chopped up a line of the marshmallow, and I'm just going to bring my bowl over so you can see it a bit better yeah, on the top it. one. Yeah. So I've got my chunks here, and what you're going to do is you're just going to roll them around so you get a nice thin coating of your icing sugar and corn flour mix. And I don't know whether you can pick up that this is a pink colour, but if you were chopping up the raspberry ripple one, which we will get chopped up later so that you can um, 
see that you will see the jam running through the middle where you've chopped it so if i can just grab a little bowl here we're just talking about the sugar free that we can't do a sugar free so just have a smaller piece <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, that's so, Joe Fitchett, don't be greedy, have a small bit. So that's what you're looking for. So as you can see now, there's, there's no stickiness there now. It's being absorbed by the ice and sugar and corn flour mix. So when I pop all these into the bowl here, just tapping off any... Roots. John's got his fingers in that chocolate mint bowl, no, I Laura. Feel, I can feel John sneaking around. You might see John today because he's sneaking around but to get If I'd realised and put the camera on, we would have caught him. Yeah. <laughs> so there's your marshmallows. You see that? Yep, we're so as you can see, I can pick them up and separate them because they're not sticky anymore and they're ready to eat. Yeah, and obviously you've made really big chunks. They're yes. about one and a half inches and by they're one inches. They're the best chunks. This is what you want. <laughs> Don't be shy. You've got yeah. plenty of marshmallow and this does make quite a lot. I've never actually um, weighed out what we've had because normally by the time I'm making it, people are taking it. So it's hard to see the full amount, but... Um, I'm going to chop up the rest of this and then later we can show you. Yeah, go got. on, taste one of those Turkish Delight ones. Are those the Turkish Delight ones? <laughs> the Turkish Delight ones. Come on, we'll yeah. have one of those each, won't we? So excuse me if I get it all around my mouth. <laughs> I'll have one. Here. I'll try. Here we are. Right. Yes, please. You can have one, Irene. Oh, by the way, we've got a newbie in the kitchen, Irene. You haven't seen her, she sat behind John. <laughs> John? You might want to, I just rubbed it all in one, but you might want to break that into two. <laughs> oh my God, Laura, they are gorgeous. So these marshmallows are really light, they're fluffy, um, and they taste really nice. I'll just see. That's a Turkish delight flavour. Mm. That is gorgeous. Honestly, you have to buy that. That is so nice, isn't it? On that camera up there, so oh. I can show them. So a minute. Just to show you the consistency of what it should be mm. like. So we've got this lovely, fluffy... And it's just yeah. stretched. Look at that. Imagine that melted. And you've got to remember, guys, these are nothing like the shop bought. The shop bought tend to be a bit dry and have a bit of like a crusty texture over the That's top. That's because, because mm -hmm. they've been in the bag for so long. Yeah. Because you up. don't really know when they were made. They do get that harder coating. And that's why when you when you open it um, and it's been out in, in the air, it does over time get that coating on it. So they make the marshmallows and then they've got to go down all the little conveyor belts to get to the bagging area by that time they've already got that little bit of crust well they so, are gorgeous i'm glad you get them theirs again. and eat ours i think i've just blown me diet <laughs> right so wendy Ann preston says this has engrossed a great en engrossed in my paint in the car oh i know she's painting her cake cart and she okay. stopped painting it while okay. she's been watching this so let's just see what else other questions that's been going on here Elaine Lawton, oh my lord, how can you not like marshmallows? I adore them. Elaine, you must give these a go because you're another one who does try all our recipes. And I'm telling you now, you and Stephen are going to love these. Your gang are going to love them. Sally Webster, how long they will keep? Laura recommends for uh, five days approximately. I will tell you, we have had them longer, yeah, but we prefer for, them. For it's, it's, it's like anything, when, it, when it's homemade, it's just it's fresher it's everything's always nicer within that first couple of days the first five days a week perfect marshmallows after then you do get that slight bit of um crusting where it's it's starting to dry so i'm just saying that it's five to seven days mainly to get it at its best as mm -hmm. it is today so if you want to go a little bit longer or you're making them for somebody then you know normally they are absolutely fine Geraldine says, thank you, Laura, for doing this. You're welcome. Um, Emily is definitely going to go shopping now. She's the one who doesn't like marshmallows. Oh, right. We are going to convert oh, Emily. Hopefully we can, we can change you into a marshmallow. Elaine Lawson lover. says, stop it, I'm drooling. Because in <laughs> fairness to Elaine, we've got a lot of people on here that when we do do a live, actually do follow what we do. Right. So Kat Riley, Elaine Lawton, Martin Dursley, Wendy Ann Preston. <laughs> Making Adam, it as we go, or no, don't make it as we go, but they, they follow the live afterwards. and they do post. And you know, that's so nice that there's so many of you that actually do that. And it does, it does give other people that are watching the confidence 
yeah. do it as well. So. You're definitely your mother's daughter, you. I was going to say the same sentence. Learn from my mum. <laughs> I was all nervous when I got here, but now I've got into it. I feel like I'm at home again with, with the sugar, sugar and crumbs team. I just need to sort out whether I'm Laura 1 or Laura 2, and then it's all good. You're always number one. She'll have to be number two, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start making my melons. And oh, and you. So, Rose, Rosalind, so can you use alcoholic jams? Of course you can. Yes, you can you use can. anything. You can use any jam. Could you um, use Nutella as well or anything? Yeah, you could you use Nutella in your chocolate one. Um, I've made um, the pina colada marshmallows and I actually put a passion fruit jam through it, which was really nice. And it's just, again, in, in, it depends when you're making it. Um, if you're doing it in in the summer, it's nice to just like change it up. And if you made it for people before, just so that they can see that you, you know, really good at everything. Ria <laughs> says thank you for such a fun demo. One of the best ones she's seen, and she'll definitely be blogging about this and our recipe about you and our recipe. And Lindsay McIver has listed so many ones that she's done. I've looked, I think Lindsay has actually made every one apart from Turkish Delight and Chocolate Mint. Right, well, well, I covered you then. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's see, Laura, can you use light condensed milk for fudge? We've just gone onto a fudge recipe there. Yes, just, you, you can. That's next week, next <laughs> month's recipe, Bernie. Yeah. I am going to be coming back to June fudge. Um, obviously, I need to sort out somebody having Harrison, but I have said to my mum that I will try and come in as often as I can to help um, with the baking. And seeing as my husband hates me doing any baking at home, it is good to come out some, you know, for the day and have a go and. And let's just, be just fair so let's just tell everybody my, my husband doesn't know where i am so you <laughs> see me don't say where i am apparently i'm hanging out with my mum and then i'm going to ikea which i am going to do afterwards but you haven't seen me here <laughs> thankfully he doesn't have a facebook account does he no he doesn't elaine lawton says, elaine lawton says you're like a duck to water laura die wheeler i'm sorry i had to go out just got back hello die don't worry Hi. you can watch it afterwards Iris, Laura, you are a clone of your mother. <laughs> this is why you're the number one girl, you see. The other office Laura has to be number two. We're training <laughs> office no, Laura to be the next clone. Right, okay then, let's see if we've got any more strong flavours. Uh, strong, I'm, I'm, I was going to say, I've got any more strong flavours. It's actually, I'm just reading Kat Riley's comment. Nice, strong flavour. So Kat, Kat follows everything we do as well and give Kat a due. She has a go at everything. You know what, this is a great community because there's more than I've actually said there's yeah. a lot more people who watch us, um, who watch us, who um, the, follow these recipes. The thing is, like, while, while I've been at home with Harrison, especially, you know, when um, he wasn't sleeping through the night, which he, his, he, he has been doing now, thankfully, um, I wasn't always getting time to come onto the Facebook Lives and watch my mum as much as I'd like to. Um, but it is nice that you can come back and you can watch it and that people have answered questions and, and there's a lot of things that, that I don't know how to do and I've learned from the guests that we've had on and um, things that just that my mum have done, she's taught me a lot as well. So it's nice that everybody wants to help each other and um, so thank you for that. Right, Bev King says, can vegan marshmallows be made? Sorry for arriving late. Yes, you can get the um, the gelatine, you can use the vegan veggie gel. Yeah. Um, I have used the Dr. Ocker one, which has used very well, uh, used very well. I've used it and it works very well. I do know other people have bought the supermarket own one and haven't had that much um, of a good experience with it. So I would just stick to the Dr. Ocker one. If something works, then then go with it yeah especially if someone else has tried it as well or if anybody else has done the veggie one and can give us any information that we can pass on to everyone else and that'd be great as well can you use any melted chocolate instead of nutella of course yes you, you can put can. anything yeah, in these marshmallows put, you, you can you can yeah the because when you're pouring into the tray it does um, start to set straight away because it's in the air so you do need to have whatever you're going to use ready beside uh, beside, um, beside you if you are going to use chocolate I would use it while it's just been melted so while your marshmallows are whisking I would have the chocolate heating up on my pan in my pan ready so that it's just easier to glide through the marshmallow when you've put it into the tray otherwise if you're trying to just get Nutella or something straight out of a jar it's just going to be a bit more difficult to spread through. Right, Rosalind said she's only had a go at making marshmallows once and that was with the egg white. The method you have demonstrated is so much easier. 
and it is this is the easy one because yeah. we were confused do you remember once yeah, when, when we made when marshmallows the first time i made it people kept saying where's the egg whites and where the egg whites the egg whites are missing yeah <laughs> yeah i've never i've never made marshmallows with egg whites but um this this recipe you know it's just always worked apart from me messing up this morning which was my fault that was my fault I was not paying attention because I was trying to sort out Harrison and I let my gelatine set. So you just need to make sure that you're constantly whisking that gelatine and that your water is warm when you put it into it so it can start to dissolve straight And also away. don't do two batches at once like yes, we've done. We've done that for speed. Yeah. We've done that for speed so, so we can have show you the, the, th the three different types that yeah. we're doing. Okay, look, show me, can't wait. So, Wendy, thanks, guys. Uh, our customers asked us to make a less calorie one. Not relevant today, so that's, that's about fudge. We're going to do fudge next time Laura's in. Sharon, only just switched on. Where can I find the recipe? Sharon, when this Facebook, everybody, when this Facebook Live finishes, everyone, just refresh the page and go back to this post. Maria will go and pin this post to the top of the page. So, give us five minutes after the live to pin it to the top of the page and the recipe link will be there. Also, Laura, do you want to point out how they can find the recipes? Yeah, let me just put some cauliflower on my fingers because I've just been trying to get all this chopped up so you can see how much marshmallow. Hey, this Laura's getting good, you know. Actually yeah. Office made. Laura's answered the questions already. Well done. Uh, Jane well. Allen. Hi, Carol. I'm sorry I'm late. Stressing in my kitchen as I had a power cut halfway through. Every time I've ordered from you, we get snow. <laughs> <laughs> don't order in the summer <laughs> don't, order, don't order in the winter no if she says she gets it every time she oh, orders right. yeah, don't order in the summer we don't get much summer do we no <laughs> i don't want to jinx it right okay then so, okay, so those are the really, um, kind of so, gonna... so on the back of all our packaging we have the <laughs> website so this is the um and, and all the back of the packaging it does have this on so we'll just turn it round. There's a little box here, and on here it's up there, the pink one above oh, it. On here, um, it does say, "For more delicious recipes, please visit www.sugarandcrumbsmixingup.com." And on there is the marshmallow recipe. I've actually put on the raspberry ripple marshmallows, the chocolate marshmallows. There's two separate recipes, just so you can see. Um, but again, just replace that icing sugar with any icing sugar that you want to and with the raspberry ripple if you're using a chocolate one once you use chocolate sauce you just use the same quantities so all the recipes that are on um, our website have been tried and tested by myself or by um, some of our bloggers that have helped us with um, recipes so they all do work so that's yeah, just in that little box up here okay brilliant 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 Okay, so let's go back to here. Has any of the other ones, for, uh, I'm going to let John take over the camera again. Has any of the other recipes, um, any of the other mixtures set yet, Laura, if they have long enough to set? Um, I don't actually know what time we've finished. Right. Is there any way we can so we definitely need a bigger there. bowl because I've, I've still got loads left. But I've got all this marshmallow, so make sure you've got a bigger bowl to pop it all in. Probably needed this one to put them in. And there's still loads left to cut there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's looking good. Very exciting. Right, so, so let's have a look. Um, so I made the raspberry ripple one first, first. so that's going to have more chance. Of... Just cut it up just to show how it's. How, how long's that been there? That's been about half an hour now, hasn't it? I think. So you know that it's set uh, when you're peeling it away, and no marshmallow is coming onto your cling film. So if I just... Well, that's a good tip, isn't it? Lift. So again, I've got a little bit on the tray there, so I've got a little sticky point. That's because there was no oil there. So if you just lift away, you can see that it's set. So it's, it is between half an hour and 45 minutes. But if it was very hot in your kitchen, it is going to take that little bit longer. Now, what they will have to remember, the jam won't set. So No, but... The, the jam doesn't set, but when we roll it in the corn flour icing sugar mix, it covers it in, yeah. so it kind of gives it a little seal, so that when you're picking it up, you're not getting jam all over your fingers. Yeah, pretty good. So, I so we won't cut that one up. And should we have a look at this one, even though this one's later, just to show them when it's not set? Look, so it this might one's be. It has cooled down uh, quite a bit. So you don't need to put these in the fridge, guys. Remember. So, so as this I'm one, lifting this up here, you can see. Can you see on this camera? camera? Yeah. So as so you can see, this one's not. This one's not set because as I'm trying to pull this back, there's little bits of um, 
marshmallow sticking to my cling film. So that's when you don't want to be yeah. trying to chop it up. Because so we need to give that another 10, 15 minutes, don't so we? So we're just going to wrap that one back up. I'm dying to taste that one. The Turkish Delight's amazing. The Raspberry Ripper, I've got to be honest, we've had loads of them, haven't we? We've, we've, had Jaffa, now, we've, yeah. made, we've made Jaffa Twist ones. Um, I mean, Lindsay McIver, the Marshmallow Queen, she's actually made, I think, nearly every flavour. I think there's just chocolate, delight, uh, chocolate mint and Turkish Delight that she possibly hasn't made. So, is that the end of our session today, Laura? Yes, it is. Yeah? So, okay, are you back on the camera there, John? We're both on here. <laughs> So, mother and daughter team today, and no mother had to keep running to look after someone's baby. Who's screaming is there? Big Probably brother's now yeah. looking after him. Apparently, big he's all there. Uncle. <laughs> uncle, yeah. Your big brother. My big brother, yeah. Yeah, uncle. Anyhow, is. is now looking after the baby. <laughs> and Harrison, I will say, is lovely and calm, I do believe. He was when I went in five minutes ago. So, what I'm going to say, thank you for joining us. This is a session every Thursday morning at 11 o'clock. We're going to do a Facebook Live. We also do a Facebook Live at 8 o'clock every Monday night. Um, and the, the Thursday ones are going to be more about baking, whereas the Monday ones are going to be more about cake decorating and products. So, just to remind you, the sale is still on. It definitely finishes Monday at Sunday night at midnight. I'm currently working on the site at the moment and putting loads more things in the clearance cupboard. So check out that clearance cupboard because John and I have got some new ideas for the website. We want to bring in some new products, not straight away, but over the year. When we get guests on, we'll be bringing some of their products in. And basically what we're going to do now is when we bring guests in, we're going to bring the products in for that week, not forever. And we're going to try and bring them in so that they're on specials for that week get them sold, get them out, and then keep on with our own products. So we want to change lots of things for Sugar and Crumbs website this year. Um, so uh, this is all going to be pinned to the post. Um, as soon as we finish, give us five, ten minutes. Maria will get everything pinned to the top of our Facebook page. Apologies again for our delay. We were delayed because Laura had a catastrophe with the marshmallow. I had a catastrophe with baby Harrison. And um, not only that, when we did go live, we went live on our personal page, which was John's catastrophe. So, <laughs> so a whole load so of fun in the kitchen. One each. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say thank you. Get out, get your rice and sugars, get them made, share them on our page. And you know what? Um, when you're following us, give some credit to us where you learned the recipe. Make sure you share this episode. One of the biggest ways you can help us is by liking this, this session today and sharing it. And you know what? Currently live at the moment. How many, how many people are currently live at the moment? 52. 52. So as soon as we finish, if I get 52 shares and you all ask your friends to watch it and share, how amazing would that be? So those are live followers and we've lost some customers because they've had to say that they've had to leave because they're going to work or whatever it is that they're doing on the day. But please share our Facebook page. It would really appreciate, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Oh, and make sure, the same tongue I know. <laughs> both make sure, and make sure you go and keep buying your products for the um, sale and check out the clearance cupboard. And I think that's it. Have we got any more to say, Laura? No, not at the moment. We'll, uh, we'll just follow up with a few questions and oh, yeah. uh, we'll let you we'll come questions? back to you about freezing the marshmallows yeah. as well. Don't disconnect so yet, we'll John. You know. Is there any questions anybody wants to ask before we go? No, no. we're asking if we're still doing free buttercream samples. Uh, we are we are doing free buttercream samples of the new flavours. We're not putting them in the order unless you ask for them. Don't message me. The boys in the warehouse start in the warehouse at 7 in the morning and I don't really see what they're doing that early in the morning. If you want the free buttercream samples of the new gin and tonic Prosecco Mojito, there's a delivery notes option. So in the delivery notes, make sure you put a message there that you want the new buttercream flavored samples, the little sample pops. If you don't put it in there, you won't get it. The problem is, is the process of the warehouse. If you ask me later, we've got to go and find the parcel, undo the parcel and repack, and I'm taking up more of the boys' time. So make sure if you want those free buttercream samples, and people who don't know what I'm on about is, uh, John and I are seriously thinking of bringing out three new flavours, gin and tonic, prosecco and, and uh, mojito. I will have to say, I don't think the mojito is going to happen. The feedback for that hasn't been, it hasn't been, it's been a 
Do you know what I mean? Where the other two have been amazing feedback. And the price of flavouring, the way that flavouring is, we can only now put product on our shelves that has amazing feedback. And it's also, while we're looking at some of our flavoured icing sugars, we're going to discontinue some of our lines, not because they don't get good feedback, they don't get amazing feedback. So we need all our top sellers, and those that are not top sellers, we're going to change for other things. Does that make sense? One more question. Can you use alcohol in the marshmallows? Would it change the recipe or the Laura and I don't drink, so we don't know. Um, <laughs> the, only, the only problem with adding alcohol is that it is obviously adding that liquid form. So it would, if you're going to try it, it'd have to go in once the um, sugar mixture and gelatine go into the mix. So it'd have to go in at that point. I've got to be... put it in any later because obviously it's liquid and you need it to volume up with the marshmallow. I've got to be honest guys, I wouldn't I wouldn't probably put it in. I'd wait until, until we the new, our new flavors until we bring out the gin and juice. tonic and prosecco. And by the way, the gin and tonic has got no alcohol in it, but it tastes amazing and the prosecco has got no alcohol in it and it tastes amazing. So when those come out, I think they're going to be out for the end of February. So don't look for them on the website, they're not ready yet. We're launching them for the end of February, early March. The reason there's a delay, we can't just buy the flavouring. The flavouring has to be made. It's a freeze-dried flavouring. When we order it, it has to be made. It has to go through all the process of being freeze-dried and granulated and grinded down and all those things. It takes a very long process, hence why it's so expensive. So we are waiting. That's in production. Then we've got to make it, so we should be launching round about the end of February, early March with those flavours. And you know what? We might get Laura back again, just so we can just taste them. to make some. So is that yeah. us done? Yeah. I think that's us done. So thank you for joining us. We're going to go and relieve to Harrison now from Wesley. We'll see you Monday night, 8 o'clock live. Don't forget, there's 58 of you live. Share it. Bye. Okay, so we've wrapped the raspberry ripple. Just doing a little test here because we've wrapped it up in some cling film. What we're going to do is we're going to freeze it so that we can let you know whether it is freezable or not and also whether the jam set. So um, we're just going to get a better idea. So I'm just going to pop that aside and we're just going to chop open our chocolate mint. Okay, so now it's coming away easier from the cling film. We know that it's ready. And it smells lovely. You can smell it as soon as you open it. You can just get all that chocolate mint taste, taste smell. See, I'm thinking about tasting it because it smells so good. Okay, so again, I'm just going to brush my knife with a little bit of oil. It doesn't always work, but if you can help yourself, just keep your knife a little bit clean. It does make it easier for washing as well. So you just want to cover the whole thing like that um just what we're going to use is i've got in here 35 grams of ice, um corn flour and 50 grams of the chocolate mint icing sugar so we've just placed it in here after we've um, measured it out and we're just going to mix that up ready because we're going to put our marshmallows in there once we've chopped them so we can move that over a little bit so as you can see the marshmallow is quite oily at the moment and that's just because it's been in the cling film so it's very sticky which is why we put that oil on there we go and when we put it in that icing sugar mix what it's going to do is it's going to take that stickiness away so i'm going to chop a few pieces off like that and pop them in there And then we're just going to roll these around in this mix and just tap off the excess and then place them into a clean bowl and that's just going to stop them from sticking together when you're storing them okay so we'll chop some more and just repeat that so it is quite messy this so don't worry make a mess clean it or worry about it later can cut this as big or as little as you want just make sure that all the sides are coated nicely there we go if 
your knife does start to get a bit <coughs> sticky again, then just put a little bit more oil onto it. It all gets absorbed by that icing sugar mix anyway.